Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is how do nucleotides join together to form polynucleotide? So we saw the three different components which form one nucleotide. But the question is how are these components connected to each other? Now the nitrogenous base which we spoke about just now. I said right that they can be purines or pyrimidines. So these nitrogenous bases are linked to the pentose sugar through a N-glycosidic bond to form a nucleoside. Okay. So two important terms here. So basically this sugar is what? Pentose sugar. Any sugar is going to be a carbohydrate. So this carbohydrate will join to this base through a glycosidic bond. Now I am not going to talk about each of these bonds in detail because we have already spoken about these in the lesson called biomolecules in class 11. So in case you want to know these details, you can refer the lesson on biomolecules. Now see something like this. this let us suppose this is a base. So which is this purine or pyrimidin? Yes, exactly. It is a pyrimidin. Why? Because it doesn't have, you can tell this very quickly because it doesn't have a double ring structure. Wherever you have a double ring structure, it can be a purine, but otherwise it is a pyrimidin. So this pyrimidin base will get connected to the sugar. Now the sugar again can be a ribose or a deoxyribose. So this sugar which you see on the screen, whether it is ribose or deoxyribose, well, it is written there, so it is easier for you to tell. But you can see here that one oxygen is less. Only one oxygen is there. The other oxygen has been removed. So that is why it is deoxyribose. So this is deoxyribose sugar. So this sugar and this base will get joined by a glycosidic bond. Now, how is that bond formed? So this bond is formed by hydrolysis. That is by removal of a water molecule, which is often known as condensation. Right? So this water molecule is removed and a bond is formed between this nitrogen and this hydrogen. So that is how the glycosidic bond formation will take place. So here you can see in this picture. So this is the sugar. This portion is the sugar. This is the base. The entire base is not being shown here. So this is the base and they are directly joined here. And that joining is due by the hydrolysis of water. Removal of this water and the bond formation take place. Now this structure which is formed, sugar plus base, this structure is known as nucleoside. And what are we talking about? We are talking about nucleotide. So when the sugar and the base combines, they form a nucleoside. When the nucleoside combines with the third component, that is the phosphate group, then a nucleotide is formed, right? So nucleoside plus phosphate groups form nucleotide. So now a phosphate group is linked to the 5-OH of a nucleoside through phosphoester bond to form a nucleotide. Now, first of all, where is this 5-OH? Now, as per the uh, rules of nomenclature in your chemistry, you know, right, the carbon atoms are numbered. So here, if you see, the carbon atoms are numbered in this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here, if you talk about the OH group, there is one OH which was attached to the carbon 1. So at one position, this OH was connected. So this was one OH. However, this was uh, used up during hydrolysis for the formation of glycosidic bond. There is another OH at the 3 position. So how do we denote these positions? We say 3 prime, 5 prime or 1 prime. That is how we denote them. And there is another OH at the 5 fifth position of the carbon atom. So that is 5 prime OH. Now with this OH, another bond is formed between the phosphate group. So the phosphate group comes somewhere here. So this is the phosphate group. So again with this phosphate group, a bond formation takes place. And this bond is known as the phosphodiester phosphoester bond. Now why was this called glycosidic bond? Because it was formed with a carbohydrate and carbohydrate is also, I mean glucose is one of the common example of carbohydrate. So from there it got its name glycosidic. Here it is formed with the phosphate group. So the name is phosphoester bond. And here the bond formation will take place again as a result of condensation. So here you can see the same bond formation CH2. This OH is gone. This H is gone. So it will directly combine with O. So this is the bond formation here which has taken place. 
So what is this bond? This bond will be the phosphoester bond. And what was this bond? This bond was the glycosidic bond. Right. So now this entire structure which is formed, what is it? So this entire structure which is formed is a nucleotide. So this is just one nucleotide. But when you talk about the structure of a DNA or the structure of an RNA, so they are polynucleotides. So they have multiple such nucleotides which are linked to each other. So again, when multiple such nucleotides are linked to each other, again a bond is required to join one nucleotide to another. Right. Okay. So let us see how that is done. Now multiple nucleotides join together through 3,5-phosphodiester bond. So this is the bond which connects the multiple nucleotides to form a polynucleotide. So this polynucleotide will be a chain kind of a uh, molecule. Like how I was telling you, let us suppose if this is one nucleotide. This is another nucleotide, this is another nucleotide, this is yet another nucleotide. So you can think of it like a train. And what do you have? In a train, what do you have? You have different bogies or whatever you call them, compartments, right? So let us suppose if, if you join some 50 compartments together, you get a real long train. So that is how it is here. If you join multiple nucleotides one after another, you get a chain of a polynucleotide. And this is how the structure is for RNA and DNA. So now let us see how exactly is this phosphodiester bond formation taking place. See, this is how it looks. So each of this structure is a nucleotide. It has the phosphate group, it has the sugar, it has the base. So this is one nucleotide. Again, this is another nucleotide. This is the third nucleotide. Now, these nucleotides has to be joined together. So, how will they join? So, let us see. So, this is how the bond formation intake is taking place. So, if you see here, this phosphate group here, this phosphate group had a free OH here, right? Similarly, this phosphate group again had a free OH here. So the bond formation actually take place with this phosphate group and this sugar. So the sugar of the first nucleotide, the bond phosphodiester bond formation takes place between one sh the sugar of the first nucleotide and the phosphate group of the second nucleotide. Again, the sugar of the second nucleotide and the phosphate group of the third nucleotide. Again, the sugar of the third nucleotide and the phosphate group of the fourth nucleotide. So that is how the phosphate phosphodiester bond formation take place. Now why is it called 3 dash 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond? Because the bond formation takes place between these two positions. If you see this is the 3 prime position right. So it bond formation takes place between the 3 prime position and the 5 prime position. So here this is the 5 prime position. Right? And this is where the bond formation is taking place. So basically, this is where the phosphodiester bond is formed. Again, here if you see, this is where your phosphodiester bond formation is taking place. So the, this bond is forming between 3' prime and 5' prime positions. Now, whenever we talk about these positions, we refer to the position of the carbon atom. So 5' prime is the carbon atom. But to this carbon atom, the entire phosphate group is attached. So we say the 5' prime carbon atom. Here again, this bond which is formed with the sugar is through the 3' prime carbon atom. So the phosphodiester bond is actually formed between 3' prime and 5' prime positions. So these phosphodiester bonds help in joining the multiple nucleotides to form a polynucleotide. So that is the significance of phosphodiester linkage. So we spoke about three types of bonds here while talking about the structure of a polynucleotide. One was the glycosidic bond, the second one was the phosphoester bond and the third one is the phosphodiester bond. So let us quickly have a look at the phosphodiester linkage ones. So here you can, we can clearly see that the nucleotides are joined together by the phosphodiester linkage to form a dinucleotide. Now what is dinucleotide? When two nucleotides join together. 
So this is one nucleotide, this is another nucleotide. So it is like a train with two compartments. So that is a dinucleotide. Similarly, a train with many compartments is going to be a polynucleotide. So here you can see this is your dinucleotide and this is the phosphodiester linkage. Now, in a very similar way, now when more and more compartments get added to your train, so the length of the train keeps on increasing. So this is how it happens. This is sugar, this is base. They are connected by glycosidic bond. Then sugar and phosphate, they are linked by phosphoester bond. And then phosphate and the sugar of the next nucleotide is connected by the phosphodiester bond. So basically, this is the glycosidic bond. This is the phosphoester bond and this one is the phosphodiester bond and in this fashion it keeps on increasing the length of the uh, polynucleotide so this is the structure of a polynucleotide now whether it is dna or rna the, the structure will remain the same so what will change is that if it is dna the sugar will be a deoxyribo sugar if it is rna the sugar is going to be a ribo sugar so that is one difference the next difference is the bases which will be present in case of dna and rna so dna is going to have a different set of bases there are some specific nitrogen bases which will be present in the structure of DNA. Similarly, there are a specific set of nitrogenous bases which will be present in case of RNA. So let us quickly have... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.